Hi, I'm Mason Marangella from Vertex FX, and today we're gonna show you how to DIY your own buffered interface system for your pedal board. Our objective today is to show you how to build a basic buffered interface system. We're gonna to focus today on a dual buffered system, so an input buffer and an output buffer. However, I'm gonna include diagrams today so that you're able to build one that can either go four cable method if you have an amplifier with an effects loop, wet, dry, wet, stereo, or split mono. We're also gonna be referencing all of the materials and supplies that we use today in the description, so you'll have direct links to those, as well as download diagrams and templates for drilling and wiring diagrams available on our website, so do check that out in the description if you wanna start a project like this on your own. So what is a pedal board interface? You hear this word thrown around in the industry all the time. But the basic way that I can explain it is a centralized hub plugs in all of your guitar cables and everything in your pedal board. So you have one place where you're doing all the plugging in and plugging out for the pedal board. So what buffers are we using today? We're gonna to be using a super high quality buffer from Creation Audio Labs. Now these are some of the best DIY buffers that I've come across and I highly recommend them. And you can actually order these directly from them and this is gonna be linked in the description where the PC board for the buffer is built into the jack itself and makes it incredibly easy to build your own buffer interfaces and customize them any way that you want. The one thing that I would tell you when you order these from them is make sure that you specify that you want a one meg input impedance because normally from the factory they come a little bit higher than that, but you can have them set to whatever you want as the loading. So I just highly recommend that you start at one meg as that's very typical of almost any of the tube amplifiers that you would presumably be using. And that's also gonna make the guitar behave in the way that you're most used to hearing it when you're plugging it directly into your amp. So do check these out in the description. The next step is you're gonna Going to follow the links in the description and you're going to print out my drilling template. This is going to allow you to tape on a template onto the box that I've designated today, which is the Hammond 1590 enclosure. You're going to tape on this template. It's going to show you exactly where to drill, the size of the drill bits that you're going to need, and then we'll be able to start the assembly. So I'm going to head to my office. I'm going to print that out and we're gonna to get to taping on the template onto the metal box itself, drill it out, and then we can start our assembly. So now I have a beautifully drilled out enclosure. This is gonna be sort of the, the enclosure that I'm gonna put all of our jacks, all of our buffers into, and it's drilled perfectly because I taped the template on here. I was able to get everything drilled out beautifully for all of my sends and returns, my guitar and amp, and then the nine volt. I've also labeled the top so I know where things are going. So what I've indicated here is I have X's on the, the holes that I'm not gonna use for any jack. And I actually have some hole plugs that we're gonna use in place of those holes. Another way to get around this, if you didn't pre-drill all four holes, is you could just not drill out those holes and you could just leave them blank if you didn't need them. I recommend drilling them all out though because if in the future you ever wanna expand your interface, you've already pre-drilled it for that application. And as you can see, if I just stick two hole plugs in there, it literally makes those non-used holes almost invisible. But let's get into building this thing. Let's start. So what I've done here is I've marked this out. A is for amp, G is for guitar. So on my pedal board, the way I'm gonna be oriented is where the cables are coming in this way, and then this side is the pedal board itself. Where those X's are is where I'm not gonna be using any jacks, so I'm just gonna plug them with these keystone plugs, and these are gonna be linked in the description. So because these buffers are designed to be on the output of any of these through jacks, the guitar jack is going to just be a standardized jack. I talked about how we were gonna have one jack that was different than the others and the whole size was different. And that's because I'm gonna be using one metal jack on the guitar side. The reason that I'm doing this on the guitar side is that you wanna make sure that you're grounding the enclosure. And the best place to do that is typically on the input of the entire system. So I've drilled out one hole differently than the rest so that I could use a metal jack like this. This makes it so I can ground everything here. I don't have to drill through the enclosure and lead a ground wire to my input jack. I think this is the cleanest, easiest way to do it for DIY. So we're gonna have one jack that's slightly different than the rest. I'm gonna tighten that down. 
and then I'm gonna put my first buffer, my input buffer that goes to the very first pedal board, or the very first pedals on the pedal board, right on the opposite side. I'm gonna tighten that down. And right now I don't need to tighten them too much, I just wanna kinda of get them roughly in place so I know where they need to be before I start the assembly. So there's my first buffer. I don't have anything in the middle. And then I wanna have my output buffer that's gonna go back to the amp again. These are gonna be placed on the output, so it's on that same side where my guitar plugs in. It's my output buffer. And then I have a, another jack that sits on the side now. The jacks that we're gonna be using today are from Neutrik and I'm gonna link these in the description. Perfect. Now I need to put in my nine volt. Make sure that everything's fitting really nicely. Again, I'm not tightening them down all the way. This is kind of just to make sure that I have all the spacing where it needs to be. Everything is looking good. And then we can make adjustments from there. And what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna do, tighten these down completely. And then I'm gonna wire these leads in to their appropriate places. And again, this is all diagram, but I'm also gonna show you. We're gonna wire in the power for the DC jack. And then we'll be able to test this thing and see that it works. So let's move on to that. The first thing that I'm gonna do is I like to deal with my power first. So those are the black and red wires that you see on both of these buffers. Now you could go red and red to the positive side of the DC jack and black and black to the negative. What I like to do instead of having four wires all converging on the DC is I like to just double them up. So I'm gonna wire the red wire, I'm gonna put it right on top of the red wire on the other PC board for the buffer, and I'm just gonna parallel them that way, same with the black, so that I only have one set of wires coming into the DC jack itself. I think this keeps it cleaner, and I like to leave enough room where if I ever do wanna add to my interface and add additional jacks, that I have the ability to do that. So I got my DC wired up. This is looking great. I'm gonna now go to my audio signal, which are the brown and the green wire. So I'm gonna be wiring them straight across to their reciprocal jacks. So let's do that. So on the Switchcraft jack, we got the green going to ground. So that's gonna be over on this side. Again, I hardly even need any of this wire at all, which is, which is great that creation gives us so much extra length. Perfect. I cut away the excess. I don't need equally with my brown wire. I like to kind of loop it around like this, keep it out of the way. You can even zip tie it. I'll show you that trick in a second. Perfect. Cut off my excess on the opposite side. This uh, leg that's closest to the wall of the jack, that's for the sleeve. The one that's furthest away from the wall of the jack is the tip, and I'm wiring it on the right side here. Again, you'll see all this in our diagram. We have so much extra room with our wires here. I'm gonna do the same thing, 22 gauge wire that I'm gonna be trimming down. I'm gonna strip off the littlest bit here. Tin it. I'm gonna tin my jack leg a little bit as well, the two that I'm gonna be using. Solder that on there. Perfect. And then the tip would be right up here in front. Perfect. So we can see we have our, our DC is wired in. We have two, two uh, DC leads going into the jack because we're paralleling those up. We have an input buffer, we have an output buffer. This is looking excellent. You could expand out multiple buffers if you did need to add, say an additional output buffer if you wanted to utilize this other unused set of jacks as another output buffer, you could put another output buffer here. You could parallel those up the same way no matter how many buffers that you used. These buffers only draw about 15 milliamps of current per buffer, and they run anywhere from nine to 36 volts. So presumably you can have almost any voltage going into this thing to power up these buffers. And just the more you know, voltage you use, the more headroom they're gonna have. Now I wanna show you the final steps of what I like to do. First of all, we're going to remove 
all the tape from the top. We're going to label this so that we know what it is, so we know which ones are the guitar, which ones are the amplifiers, which are the send and return from the pedals. We're going to label up the 9 volt DC that can go up to 36 volts. And then we're going to put on the bottom and I'm going to show you one more trick. So let's label it up and then we'll do that last trick before testing. All right, so I'm peeling off the top here. I'm going to do one row at a time just so I don't forget where I am. Dead on, looks great. Exactly the spacing that we want. So I'm gonna cut this with my scissors. There's my send and return. So we got that side done. Let's make sure that, that lines up perfectly. It does. I'll cut that down. Line it up. So we got our interface completely done. We have a buffer on the input, we have a buffer on the output, just the way that you'd want it for any standard mono system. And again, you can expand this any way that you want. You have four additional jacks that you can choose to use for an effects loop, for stereo, for an audition loop, for wet dry or wet dry wet, whatever way you wanna do it. I'm gonna have diagrams for all those different contingencies so that you can do it. I'm gonna have other types of drill diagrams as well if you wanna have a bigger box that allows you to do some of the same stuff. But I wanna tell you about the very last thing you need to do before this thing comes back together. We've labeled it, it looks beautiful, we know what it is. But one thing that most pedal companies don't do is they don't properly ground their case. And if you notice, on the bottom of this case, there's only one side where the paint is removed from the countersink. We wanna make sure we remove all the paint from each one of those countersinks so that even if this screw comes loose, we still have a good ground. It's keeping the whole entire case grounded and we're getting all the benefits of the shield of the actual case itself. So what I like to do is this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my Dremel tool, I'm gonna stick it in those holes, I'm gonna remove the paint on those countersinks so then that way I always have a high quality ground to the case. Let me do that real quick. Now I have a high quality ground for the case. I've removed the paint from all four of those countersinks. So now I can put it together and give it a test to make sure everything's working. So that was building your own DIY buffer interface using a dual buffer setup, using the DIY buffers from Creation Audio Labs. They did a great job of designing a buffer that easily fits inside of a jack, allows you to use it in a DIY context like this. I'm really happy with the way this turned out, and I'm also really happy that we have so many different expandable options that we gave you the basic template for the dual buffer and you can expand this for wet dry, you can expand this for four cable method with an effects loop, you can expand it for an audition loop, you can expand it for stereo, split mono, all the different types of wiring diagrams we already have listed, that I've already gone through and approved that are on our website so you can download any of those and mix and match them to your heart's content. The idea is we get you the right information, we show you the basic kind of skeleton, and then you can embellish it in the way that works best for your pedal board. Feel free to take these wiring diagrams, take them to your techs and have them build them for you if you don't feel comfortable doing it yourself. Use all of our links and resources. This is what they're here for. Otherwise, I just appreciate you watching. I appreciate that you guys are gonna be taking some of this on. I really encourage you to give it a try. If you have any questions, you can always put those in the comments or you can email us directly. If something's not working out for you or you think that there might be something you're doing wrong, we're happy to give you some coaching on that. No questions asked. But until next time, I'm Mason Marangella, the Rig Doctor. Thank you for joining us today on learning how to build your own buffer interface. Thank you.